And Ghana will resume international passenger flights today, the 1st of September. President Nana Akufuado, who announced this on Sunday, citing a drop in uh, active coronavirus cases. President Akufuado said all travelers arriving in Ghana must uh, present a proof of a negative COVID-19 test result done within 72 hours before departure. They will also be tested on arrival at the airport with the result expected within 30 minutes. The passengers will be required to pay for the test. Those who test positive will undergo further assessment and treatment, but should Children under five will not be tested. Air, land and sea borders were closed in March to prevent the spread of the virus. We're now joined by Odilia Ntiamor, a head business programming multimedia group from Ghana. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, what is the general feeling amongst the people about the latest government's decision, especially with the fears of a resurgence? Um, basically, I think that people have been expecting this. Uh, the reopening was actually been expected in uh, 1st August when um, we cited some Kenyan Airways announcement that flights to Ghana um, will start from the 1st of August. And so my expectation was that that was going to happen from the 1st of August. But that didn't happen. Um, until this September, I think. Everybody seemed to be pretty much prepared. Um, businesses want to run again. And remember that Ghana's economy is largely uh, based on importation. And so um, people who have been doing imports and who would like to travel out and to continue their businesses have been looking forward to um, of this and so basically uh, what can actually save the situation is to have um, the COVID-19 protocols really observed and really adhered to and that right. has been clearly stated by the president in the statement on Sunday. Our expectation is that um, people will follow these protocols but apart from that people are really wait have been really waiting for this and it's a, a welcoming news for the tourism sector especially, that largely depends on um, international tourism because domestic tourism is not at its best. And so the hotel industry's expectation is that it was bounced back again. Um, okay. Looking at the fact that occupancy rates dropped by more than 70%, some hotels haven't even still opened. And having this uh, resumption done at the international airports means a lot to the tourism okay. industry. Uh, you, you spoke about compliance and um, uh, um, something like in the past. I, I want to get your uh, general impression on the level of compliance after local flights, of course, re resumed some three months ago. Can it be used to project the level of compliance for international passenger flights also? Yes, I think so, because um, I have been in flight. I was on um, the African World flight that was on Monday to Tamale, the domestic flight, and the protocols were followed to the teeth. Um, you're giving even sanitizers at the very entrance, um, sitting in the plane, you've got to wear your masks. And so for the domestic side, um, the compliance level was really high up there. My expectation is that that will also be followed at the international um, sector or the international side. Note that when the international flights come in, um, people have, they, they come in large numbers. And so the people at the entrance receiving them, together with uh, the people who have come from these international flights, will have to be really compliant. Okay. Uh, once you have large numbers, controlling the large numbers are the issues. And the airport has done a simulation exercise that was yesterday, they put everything in place, um, worked out all the scenarios, worked out all the numbers um, in the simulation to make sure that this is actually done and done well and right. the controls are, are put in place. And so Kotoka is ready. Um, people will just have to follow the rules and regulations that the president has indicated. And, and quickly, your, your assessment of the government's handling of the pandemic and uh, for Singana, are you confident that the country also has flattened the curve enough to open up this much? Yeah, I 
think I think that the the, camp, the country has um, worked very hard. Um, it's not too easy to to get people who are not um, so educated to comply. I've been to other parts of the country where it looks like the COVID information is actually um, haven't it hasn't really reached there or the seriousness with which um, people in Accra, in the capitals have taken this, hasn't really gone down um, in those sides. But that's not to say that uh, the government hasn't put in their best. They have really pushed, and uh, that's how come we're having this huge numbers of recoveries, um, huge numbers in relation to um, people going home and re uh, receiving treatment even from home. Um, I just think that it's a personal decision to want to protect yourself and protect people that are uh, in your circles. Companies have really complied with a no mask, no entry um, signage, and that has really also worked. Um, our expectation is that people will take their health into their own hands and comply. Otherwise, there isn't much that government can do. All right. Um, pretty interesting um, word from Ghana there. Thank you so much, Odilia and Tamoa, uh, for sharing with us. Welcome.